Right, we are motoring out of uh, our little harbour <laughs> or our moorings. There's a fisherman over there. There's our little boat that was that broke its mooring this year. And that, I'm just going to show you this boat. I love this boat. I think, I'm sure that's a Corrie Bee. And it's got quite a famous heritage because um, the guy that wrote Ming Ming, uh, that sailed, he sails everywhere, Iceland, the Arctic Circle, he did that, excuse me, he did that on a modified uh, Corrie Bee. Yeah, that's a Corrie Bee. It's a beautiful, beautiful shape. Look at it, like a little canoe. Really seaworthy. They, I think that's a bilge keel, but they come in um, fin keel as well. So I don't know which one, you know, Ming Ming was, but that one's a bilge keel. Um, but even so, bilge keels are a lot more seaworthy and they're a lot better than people think, you know, the more... They're making a comeback as well. So the more I read about bilge keels, the more I'm learning that they're, um, you know, they're making a comeback. And there's a better design of bilge keel now where the, the fins don't go kind of straight down. They splay a little bit. So arguably they can be better at wind and, and whatnot than a fin keel. And the beauty of them is that they can, you can park them, you know, on the beach and whatnot. And for, in the UK, you know, we get, we can get 10 metre tides. So it's really important to be able to park your boat, you know, if you have a bigger one, in my view. Um, oh, there's other people with fin keels would argue against that. But, you know, maybe they're, maybe they're marina jumpers and and the ones that like bilge keels are the ones that are doing more like the adventurous stuff i, I don't know i don't know for now this will do me lifting keel floating eight inches of water she runs a crown it doesn't really matter too much <laughs> we're adding to our collection of uh, aircraft that are coming over this is a helicopter sounds like a chinook yeah, one of those dual propeller ones. They're quite, I don't know how I know that, but I seem to. Here it comes. Yeah, it is. A little bit slower than the jets. lose it in the sun. You see how well this new Action 3 performs facing into the sun. I can't I can't see a blooming thing at the moment so you can actually see the reflection on the water there. I don't know if you can see that. Look how fast we're sort of trundling along 4.7 miles an hour. Which incidentally is, because I want to get more into knots, 4.1 knots. And you can see how, how well we're trundling along. There's, I think it's called gossamer. I don't know if you can make it out. Like little spider's webs, blooming everywhere. They're, they're streaming down the lake. You can see bits in the lake. And they, they've obviously caught the boat as it's, she's been moored up. So, look, everywhere. I don't know if you can make it out. Look, all this. It's just spider's web, really. I thought that was supposed to happen in the spring, but obviously not. We were right up in the mouth of the river. And of course, mouths of rivers, you've got to be very careful, the silt and the, 
it just builds up the the the, the, the bed of the river that's there and uh yeah we just ran aground well we didn't run aground we actually just caught the propeller a little bit so i hope that's okay it was it wasn't too bad but we, i had to push us off with the uh i had to push us off with the with the paddle anyway i've chucked the anchor in let's have a quick look at that where's she gone she under us shouldn't be under us but we're just uh letting the anchor set at the moment pretty sure that's yeah we're set there i'm just using one of the fair leads here and we should be pulling around that way just slowly but surely but there's not much going on but you'll just see the anchor's just paying out there whoopsie then let's be careful there we go we should be setting over there that that feels about right right one thing i want to do is get this tiller pilot at least tested out today uh i don't know oh it's a perfect day to test it out because we know we're not gonna sort of tippy at all um i've got the tiller pilot here i've got my battery with me so the first thing we've got to do and i'm really annoyed because i have forgotten my tape measure which is really annoying because i really needed it for this but we're going to do our best anyway i don't think there's anywhere the this little bracket can be fitted anyway so it can only go we know roughly where it's got to be anyway um so what we're going to do we have to get the Tiller pilot out. Uh, switched on, sorry. So let's get that in and switched on. Let's get the right one. There we go. And we should be on. There we go. And then we need to get this halfway out. So how do we do that? Oh, okay, we do that. So what we'll do, we'll get it fully out. We'll use this little bit of string we've got here to then measure the whole lot. So from the end of that knot to there, we're gonna halve that. So the middle needs to be here. Yep, so that's the middle but we have got one slight issue here that is that well let's just pop that there yeah we're nowhere near the middle here so what that will mean is we will only have you know a little bit to play with like this it'll be this way this tack actually and it'll only have that much to play with. Um, if we bring it back a little bit, oh, then we'll have a little bit more just from that angle. The further back you go, the more angle you have. Um, the other idea I've actually had was I could pop it in like here, and then, but that is only 12 inches. Now, I have heard that some people especially on smaller boats have had to push it back further anyway so that might be somewhere where it works and if you think about it this this tiller pilot will go up to 32 feet boats yachts so this little 19 footer and it's a very small 19 footer really open boat you probably can steer i mean i can i can steer quite easily there so that's one option is to just drill through here and put it in here then we can back plate it and do what's needed to be honest with you that would be the perfect scenario for me uh, we could also get it centered properly because it needs to really be back there but i've got my vhb double-sided tape here I've got a new roll actually i go i go through this stuff like sweeties <laughs> i'm always sticking stuff to stuff i'm going to put 
Well, I mean, one strip of that on there is going to be fine, isn't it? It's almost the width of it anyway, so, so I'm going to put a piece of that there. On there. Now, okay, let's get this roughly in the centre. I'm going to put that in like this. And we're going to have it about there, which is about right. Whoa, you can actually you can see how good this is. And then for now, because I don't want to, wow, that's amazing how, how good that, that's stuck actually. For now, because I don't want to um, stick, um, I don't want to drill any holes if I don't have to, I am, um, no, that, that's, that was, I've had that stuck on the outside there for ages. Because we don't want to drill any holes in, in just yet, I'm just going to stick that on there. And I'm hoping this tape will do a good job of being just sticking. This tape is like evil. It's like if the devil made glue or tape, this is what he'd make. Right, and then there we go. So that kind of works. Well, that just, click, just won't click in there. But that'll be have to keep our eye on that. Okay, so now we've got to work out how to use this thing. Okay, we're just going to operate it in the most basic autopilot mode. So you make sure the rudder is centered. So we're going to take the power off. We're going to make sure the rudder is centered. Power on. So it knows the rudder is centered now as it switches on. And then all we do is press the standby auto button and the tiller pilot will lock onto the current course. Well, let's give that a go. Let's weigh anchor and give it a go. So, here we go. I've had to hold this down. If I hold it down, it seems the same place. It actually just came off um, with the force. So, we've got the wing coming right on our starboard beam right now, coming across us this way. And the boat, with me sat on the left, is really struggling to steer into the wind. But as you can see, I actually aim for this little, uh, you're not going to be able to see this, there's like a little light lamp post on the road there and that's where I'm sort of aiming. And the boat is obviously steering into the wind because it, it, it's actually a course, I'm assuming it's got a compass built into it, this thing, and it's, a, you know, it's trying to sell you on a course or a bearing uh not straight because straight with this wind would end we'd end up you know 10 meters 20 30 40 meters down there by the time we got there so right now the other thing against this is i've not really got the engine on very powerful but look how good this is now i'm going to just switch i'll have to sit in the middle I'm gonna hope so I'm hoping this will stay where it is for now it's stuck a bit better I think and now I'm in the middle now we should see if this works we should see the rudder or the tiller coming closer and closer to the middle we are coming about a little well we are actually sailing pretty straight And I was about to say, as we're turning, you'll see the rudder hopefully come more to the centre. Now, I don't think, I think this is too far away from the rudder stock. So I'm going to test this further back. But at the moment, you know, you can see the, the little lamppost over there. Tell the truth, I don't know whether it was the farmhouse or the lamppost. But we are sailing pretty straight I reckon this is a really tough test as well sailing almost pretty much beam on to the wind that's got to be the worst test for an autopilot but you can see how we've settled down and I've now sat in the middle and look at this the rudder is just cocked slightly 
to port, which you'd expect to help us into the wind. And look, we're coming about. So now we can alter our course by pressing these. So if you press and hold, I'm gonna do it now. So we can alter our course to come there, to come there, and we'll come round and maybe aim for that boy. It's a little bit, yeah, we'll aim for that boy. So let's try that. So this is, get it this the right way. So you can do one click is one degree. Five, and then we're gonna do, if you press and hold, you get 10 degrees. There you go. There we go. 20, so that's 25 degrees. This is where we might risk this just popping off. 35, 45 degrees. So we should be bearing off now or bearing into the wind. So it won't actually go any further, it's at full extension. So that's 65 degrees. We need more engine. The rudder's just not getting... There we go. We need at least, well, we need 90, don't we? 75, 85, 95, 105, 115, 125, 135 degrees. So that should bring us roughly over this direction here. And now, look, you see the wind will be acting on the port side now, so you'd expect this to suddenly start to, there we go. In fact, we probably overcompensated there. Oi, okay, and now it's just come off. Let's put it into standby. What happened there was the rudder got stuck on the mainsail block, so. Let's come about and we'll try that again. I mean, I'd say that was a Hercules, but that's the only sort of four propeller transport plane I know. So it might, it looks too big to be a Hercules, but we'll look that up. I'm gonna have to do a, a vid video of all the aircraft we've seen on the lake this year, because it's been crazy. Just to show you how difficult it is, look. To steer into the wind, look. Look how far I've got this rudder, and look how slowly we're steering it's hard. There you go, I've got to get the rudder all the way over to get us, you know, into the wind. She'll do it, but once you come off the wind, the windage in the in the hull, I think it must be, you know, plays a big part. So I'm gonna get this set up now, um, and then I'll come back to you. Okay, so we're, we're sailing pretty much into the wind now, and you can see from the shroud and the and the flags and oh my poor old Jolly Roger has seen better days. Let's see if we can. Uh, oh God, I was grabbed hold of the gaff then. Let's see if we can just untangle her. Oh boy! <laughs> well, there were like a party pack children's flags. So they were for my child. And uh, they're about like literally like three pound for ten, so I'm sure we've got enough spares there. And anyway, it looks like a looks like a proper Jolly Roger that does now. <laughs> the ghost ship Lulu. Right, so we are aiming roughly for the well, just here. There's not many of that mocks here, really. And so far, she's been holding a really good course. I've moved the block back. So it will give her a little bit more steerage. It's, she, she does need a bit more tape. Let me get some tape. Okay. That's 
should do us. The other thing I would say is um, this blooming thing here is getting in the way and actually if the rudder was a little bit higher like I'd like it to be just a little bit of a something to rest the rudder up like that then we'd be in a much better position. Once it knocks off there, it can get caught on it. So we need to watch that. But look, so far, look, look at that course. So I'm pretty pleased at this. So now we're gonna do some course changes with her. So let's do, again, I need to sit in the middle to give it the best chance. So let's do a 90 degree, which would be roughly over there. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There we go, 90 degree course change. She has responded beautifully with the with the tiller pilot at the back there. She's overcorrected if anything, but let's go and have a look. And there we go. Look at that. So I was aiming for the sort of adventure centre. Let's come this side. The adventure centre. And that is amazing. Let's do some uh, selfie photography and see if she holds her course. So as you can see, look at that. We are bang on. So now we're gonna do another 90 degrees right or to starboard. Oh, so 10, 20, 30, 40. Look at that coming about 50, 60 was that? 80, 90. We're going to do 110, 120. Yeah, you got to watch that. We need to lift this rudder up, like I just said. Whoop! Come in! <laughs> the tape just came off there, look, the, the sort of sticky tape. But this is really good news because it means I can put the hole in, the in here, which is, we can backplate. So that's brilliant news. Here we go. So now look, I'm sitting on the, the right hand side. You can see how much I can make a difference rocking the boat. What speed are we doing? 4.3. Let me just go check the, the wattage we're pushing. Oh, only 300. So you see, I'm really knocking the boat about here. The other good news is, well, I don't know. We might put the pin under because that might have the effect of lifting her up a little like this. But if we put the pin on top, we could put a little pin we could put a little block and then put the pin in that. You can see how it gets caught. See how it gets caught a little bit here. But we could get, I think that's what's actually pushing the, this pulling this block off when it gets caught on here. If it was just raised a little bit, that would be, that would work. 
I am mighty impressed. So look, we're a little bit close to shore here. Let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And let's see our course come about. And we're now basically running. We're still a little bit close to shore here. I don't like that little outcrop. So I've just moved 10 degrees. Look at that. So my radio has, uh, so my radio has uh, uh, AIS in it. So it's, it's not an AIS uh, transmitter, um, but it's an AIS receiver. So if I've got that set up properly on the sea, my autopilot working, uh, and the motor on, or even the sails, we'd have to check it with the sails, then, hey, <laughs> I could just send the boat around the UK on her own, maybe, and uh, no one really needs me anymore, do they? Although, I'd like to think I'm a little bit more interesting in terms of the chat than, uh, than Lulu. So, that, it, I mean, there's so many things I'm impressed with there. First of all, I'm super impressed with Gorilla Tape. Every time I use this stuff, I am more and more impressed by it. <laughs> Secondly, um, I'm impressed with uh, VHB. Again, the more I use this, the more impressed I am with that. Um, thirdly, though, the thing I'm most impressed with is this. This is amazing. I'm gonna just put it away and switch her off. I'm just amazed at that. I'm just going to check the battery. Oh, we're still. In fact, in fact, I've got one green light more than I had when we first started. Oh, I think if you plug it in, yeah, you'll see the light go. Go down. So that little, that little jaunt didn't really, didn't really cost us any, any uh, battery at all. So that's brilliant. I think with that test done, we're gonna box her up and we're gonna to have to give this tiller pilot a name because you can't be that good or that clever and not and not have some kind of name. <laughs> not in my book anyway. That's just amazing, I'm really chuffed. So one tiller pilot tested. What a lovely day today turned out at. Lovely October day. This is what it can be like. Uh, day of two halves. 